Hi guys. It is great to be back at Bugs in a Jar Farm. It is a, another gray, gloomy, cool, I think we're about 65 degrees here. Soon to be rainy day, imagine that here in uh, New York, baby. It is a Friday. It is a Friday, July 14th. 2023. I don't know. It's Friday. I'm supposed to be doing my uh, ecological meltdown roundup rant from Manga Bay today. I forgot all about that, but uh, I'm just sitting here enjoying my morning cup of Save the Planet organic coffee. Yes, I am saving the planet by drinking uh, organic coffee while I still can, enjoying the fruits of the labor of global industrial civilization with this delicious cup of organic c coffee. I need to, I don't know, the last time I did an organic coffee rant. That's another rant for another day. So anyway, I just returned... Uh, <laughs> from my supposedly five-night foray to the Gray Fox Bluegrass Festival, where the deluge sent me packing after two nights back to the cover of Global Industrial Civilization. And, um, in Lord, I have, what am I up to? Six or seven ticks that I have pulled off of me from there. I, I'm a little bit unclear, guys. Uh, how about you on, on this whole thing about this insect apocalypse? Now I realize that ticks are not exactly insects. I guess they're more closely related to spiders. But why is it that ticks are exploding in population while lightning bugs and honeybees and things that splat against your windshield are are going completely down the tubes. So, for all I know is I uh, I probably have some fatal tick-borne illness now. So I was listening last night to some fellow down, good Lord, one of these doomers down here... Um, Making the metaphor that basically uh, the the Anthropocene is a metaphor, or I should say that, that a tick-borne illness is a metaphor for the collapse of global industrial civilization, and I and I thought that was a pretty good metaphor. You know, he was talking about. Uh, that generally speaking, tick-borne illnesses do not just kill you in a bang. Uh, you, you know, it's they, they 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 tend, you know, to come on slowly and subtly and build over time. Uh, whether it's Lyme's disease or what, I, I don't know how many of these tick-borne. It's like every week. Uh, up here in New York, they're talking about some new tick-borne disease that will kill you, but they all sound pretty awful. Uh, that they get in your, I guess, in your bloodstream is where it would start, obviously. They they start in the bloodstream and, you know, they attack your, your nerves and your joints or, and I guess there's one that just starts slowly eating your brain and they tend to be painful, uh, long-lived, and it's just this slow, downward, painful spiral uh, until you finally, mercifully die and, and get put out of your misery. And this fellow, and, and I agree with him, was pointing out this is, this is a pretty good metaphor as how the collapse of, of everything, of uh, the collapse of the global industrial economy, 
uh, followed by the collapse of everything else is going to play out, barring the bang of nuclear war, uh, which is, is, is really the only way that I see, that, that he and I both see global industrial civilization coming down with a bang. Otherwise, what it's going to be is basically a tick-borne, uh, long, drawn-out, painful spiraling down uh, until everything collapses and dies. Uh, and the metaphor, of course, being that humans are the ticks. We are the ticks that have uh, infected everything. That uh, our poison, our toxin, whatever you want to call it, a, you know, a tick doesn't bite a human uh, thinking it, 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 it's going to kill the human. There, there's nothing in it for the tick to kill its host. It's just going about its business. What ticks do? They eat and they breed and, and then they die. Uh, you know, they're taking advantage of this, uh, of this uh, limitless resource called a human body. They're not the individual tick. Probably if you got to know, you, you know, if you went out and had a beer with a tick, uh, they're probably, you know, most, mostly ticks are probably pretty nice guys. You know, they're talking about the weather, uh, you know, wishing they could fly, um, you know, they're probably looking for some doomer tick chick. Uh, they're, they're, they're going about their business being ticks. And meanwhile, inadvertently, uh, they're killing uh, their host. Um, and, and this is exactly what humans are doing, where... You know, individually, I still think that uh, people, as opposed to humans, are pretty nice folks. You know, I was at this bluegrass festival. Uh, I, I met all, I, I didn't meet one asshole at, at this bluegrass festival. It was a bunch of pretty nice folks getting together, uh, playing bluegrass music, doing what uh, people do. Uh and it, unintentionally uh, inflicting harm and death uh, on this planet. So, uh, I mean, it, it's called payback. Uh, so, you know, in effect, <coughs> if I do have some uh, horrible, painful, uh, slow spiraling down uh, collapse and fall of my my own body due to some uh, tick uh, bite that I got at the Gray Fox Bluegrass Festival. It's called payback for what I have done to this planet. Every single human being on this planet, uh, on one level, deserves to die of, of some horrendous tick-borne disease. Uh, it, 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 it is coming full circle. It's reaping what you sow. Uh, this is n n not really an original thought. It's, uh, it, it, it just is what it is. Um, so I'm, I'm just, just, just going to ramble here. So, you know, I was, uh, I, I was on full screaming... Uh, rant yesterday morning packing up uh, my soggy tent and all of this shit and, uh, and bitching and whining about everything and my uh, my friend was sitting there just kind of shaking her head uh, she's telling me that I that I fight the world uh, and, and she said for for some, I wish I could remember her exact wording, that something like, for she said something like, for somebody who wants global industrial civilization to collapse, Sam, uh, you sure are a whiner. Uh, you know, when the first little thing 
uh, threatens your comfort zone. I mean, she didn't she didn't word it that way, but uh, but it was basically for someone who she was l like the vast majority of people who have uh, who have ever heard of doomers. And and this woman is what I would call doomer adjacent. She's not a full blown doomer chick, but she's not a clueless moron. She's she's what we would call a doomer adjacent. Uh, here in here in the doomosphere, what they misunderstand about doomers, I guess I, I guess I can really only speak for myself. Maybe there are a few doomers out there who want global industrial civilization to collapse. Uh, I, I, I am I am not one of them. I, I think doomers more than anybody else on the planet appreciate global industrial civilization because we don't take it for granted that uh, that we're going to be able to get up in, in New York uh, in the middle of nowhere in New York and brew up a cup of planet-saving organic coffee that came from God knows where. I think this might have come from Peru. I don't even know where this, uh, you know, we understand uh, that this whole thing uh, can come crashing down. And as uh, the late, great Gail Zawacki, uh, it, it, you know, told me in my interview with her that, uh, <clears throat> that I don't want to be here when global industrial civilization collapses, and neither do you. Uh, <laughs> Gail got out of here in time. Gail got out of here with the screen door just hitting her on her own guilty doomer chick ass. We lost Gail a couple of years ago. But, you know, we were talking about this very thing. Uh, the, the, the collapse of global industrial civilization, there's going to be nothing pretty about it. Uh, I, you know, from my teeny weeny little human perspective, uh, I don't even need the collapse of global industrial. I, I just need to lose this cup of coffee. I, I need to lose this like yesterday at the Bluegrass Festival. I, I need to lose my damn internet. Uh, I, I go one morning uh, w without a w without an internet connection uh, at, at a Bluegrass Festival. And, and uh, I'm packing up my shit and, and heading back home. Uh, <laughs> You know, do, do I want, there, there, there is a, a subtle but huge difference between wanting something for myself and understanding what we need. Well, not, it's, the, it's, the, it's this word, we. Uh, glow, the collapse of global industrial civilization uh, is going to be absolutely horrible uh, for humans. It's but you would think that the collapse of global industrial civilization is go is going to be good for every single one of our fellow Earthlings. So we need global industrial civilization to collapse, and we need. Uh, humans to go extinct uh, to save the planet on one level, but as we learned in the uh, Corona panic, we have the uh, Bill Gady paradox. Uh, Gady is G A E D E. If you, I've interviewed Bill Gady a couple of times, and his. Uh, this is an oversimplification. You can listen to my interview with Bill. Is uh, you know what he's pointing out is that the collapse of global industrial civilization is not only going to be the end of humans, it is going to be the end of every single one of our fellow Earthlings because 
on our way out, we are literally going to eat. We are literally going to eat every single one of our uh, fellow earthlings. Uh, bigger than a mouse, uh, you, you know, at least on land. Uh, before we get, before the last human dies of starvation, uh, you know nothing uh, bigger than a mouse uh, is safe from the stew pot. Uh, so you know that that's his uh, that that's his point. Anyone acting like the collapse of global industrial civilization and the extinction of humanity. Uh, it, it is going to save the planet if your definition of the planet, you know, is our fellow earthlings. The joke is going to be on you, or the joke is going to be on our fellow earthlings uh, that we throw in the stew pot on our way out. And then, of course, Bill's question is, after we eat uh, every single one of our fellow earthlings, what do we throw in the stew pot next? You know, it's like my favorite scene out of Young Frankenstein, where you know, uh, you know, Frankenstein and that little girl are sitting around this open well, and they're picking daisy, they're picking petals off of daisies and dropping the petals one by one into this open well, <laughs> and so they get to so they they get to the last petal of this beautiful daisy uh, and the little girl looks up at this monster uh, looming over her and uh, with this innocent little look on her face is what do we throw down the well next <laughs> and then of course it just goes on to the to the next scene of the movie uh, you answer your own question what do we throw down the well next we're, we're going to, after we've gone through the daisies, uh, after we and the, and the monster that we have created uh, together have thrown, uh, have picked every petal off of every last daisy, uh, what do we throw down the well next? Uh, <laughs> you know, take a wild guess what we throw down the well next. Uh, so there, you know, it's, it's, it's like there's no way out. But uh, I, I still find myself, uh, I, I don't know, and not so much rejecting the uh, Bill Gady paradoxes. I, I still am clinging to the uh, apocaloptimistic uh, hopium that uh, that the quicker humans go uh, and the quicker global industrial civilization collapses and humans go extinct uh, the better uh, the chance is that we're going to leave a few fellow earthling survivors behind to rebuild uh, the stock, but th th this doesn't mean that I, as a human, want this for myself and my fellow humans. Uh, from obviously, from a human's perspective, uh, it, it, it's not a good thing, uh, for, uh, but, but for those of our fellow earthlings who are not going to end up in the stew pot uh, on our way out, it, it's the best thing. Uh, it, it's their only, it's their only little sliver of a uh, little sliver of uh, 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 hope it is for us to go, because what's good for humanity is bad for the planet. This is an ironclad rule. This is not an original thought. Uh, anybody uh, who has uh, studied uh, ecology 
for five minutes uh, understands the one of the number one rules uh, of the Anthropocene is uh, what's good for humans is bad for the planet. So if humans are the problem, the solution is getting rid of the humans. And other than this, you know, this this bloodbath um, stew pot orgy, uh, it, as our closing in the closing bell of the collapse of everything, uh, we gotta go. You know, so I was over there reading. Uh, I guess you guys know this Doomer chick, Jessica Wildfire. Uh, I, I'm on the fence about Jessica Wildfire. She she writes for Medium.com and maybe Substack. And anyway, she is. Uh, she's not quite an Umer Haxley in the Doomosphere at Medium.com, but she is. She's the queen of the Doomer chicks at medium.com. Uh, Jessica Wildfire. I don't know how old Jessica is. Uh, I do think she self-identifies as a Doomer, but she has two kids. So she is a, a Doomer chick breeder who has made the decision uh, to bring two children onto this planet. So she was writing uh, yesterday, <coughs> I think the name of her essay was something like, Who Needs Parents Anyway? Just, just stop, something like, Just Stop Having Children, Who Needs Parents Anyway? Uh, and which was just, it wasn't so much a rant as a whine. Uh, Jessica was whining about... Uh, all of the pain and suffering that uh, she and her husband have inflicted on themselves, um, you know, on themselves uh, by making the conscious decision to bring two more humans uh, onto this planet in the 21st century and was basically whining that it's the, you know, it's uh, the government's responsibility and society's responsibility and the, I, I don't know, you can read the essay about how it's everybody else's responsibility to make it easier for her and her husband and all of these parents to uh, bring more children onto this planet. This is one of the major Doomer chicks. Jessica Wildfire understands as much as any woman on this planet uh, how how screwed uh, we are and how screwed, particularly anyone born in the uh, 21st century, uh, their hellish future uh, that they face. So anyway, but she had this one comment in the in her essay somewhere and this is I, I don't have it in front of me but I think this is a fairly I'm somewhat paraphrasing but it, it's a fairly close uh, approximation of a direct quote and I might actually hit it <clears throat> okay what did Jessica say even the harshest Malthusian, even the harshest Malthusian would not agree or believe that it would be a good thing for 90%, for 90% of humans to just stop breeding. That would not save the planet. But anyway, it was something like, but the, the point of it being was that, that even uh, the harshest Malthusian would not support, maybe that's the word she used, but that, that's the point she's making, that she doesn't care how much uh, uh, of a Malthusian uh, that you are, that there's no way anybody would support 90% of 
uh, of humans to immediately stop bringing more children uh, onto this planet. That would not save the planet. And my comment to Jessica, I don't know if she's responded to it, if she's let it lie there, or if she uh, has, uh, or, you know, deleted it. But my comment to Jessica on that contention was, well, at least there's one thing that the non-Malthusian Doomer Chick breeder and the ultra-harsh Malthusian Doomer Dude non-breeder can agree on. Now, we can agree on that point. If the point is that if 90% of this planet stopped breeding, that would not save the planet. I am in 100% agreement with Jessica Wildfire, uh, mother of two. Uh, I 100% agreement with, with Jessica Wildfire that uh, having 90% of this planet immediately stop breeding would not save the planet. But of course, I'm probably might have a little bit of a difference of opinion with Jessica. As I said, the reason that would not save the planet, if my math is correct here. So right now, we're adding one million humans to this planet every four days. So if my math is correct, uh, Elliot Jacobson, would you, would you let me know, Elliot, is my math correct? that if if we're adding four if we're adding 1 million people to this planet every 4 days right now and 90% of people stopped breeding uh, my math says we would be adding 1 million humans to this planet every 40 days every 40 days instead of every 4 days that there would be, you know, a city the size of Austin, Texas, uh, being uh, inflicted upon uh, our fellow Earthlings. Uh, it would slow down the great acceleration, but it would not stop it. As I commented to Jessica, uh, yeah, having 90% of people immediately stop breeding would not save the planet, because the only way to, quote, save the planet is to have 100%, 100% of humanity to immediately, immediately stop breeding. Uh, but of course, at this point, uh, the toothpaste is out of the tube, and... Uh, even if you don't factor in the Bill Gates paradox that we would just end up eating every one of our fellow Earthlings if 100% uh, of uh, humans stop breeding uh, all of a sudden that uh, not not even factoring in the Bill Gates paradox you know we've probably already unleashed some, uh, you know, some metaphorical tick-borne illness uh, out there onto this planet. Uh, e even after we're gone, the toxic legacy, uh, you know, Derek Jensen wrote an entire book about this subject. Uh, what we leave behind on our way out for this planet to deal with. Uh, and, and every single day that uh, we human ticks, uh, we, you know, the, the parasites that we are, every single day uh, that we're allowed to rule this planet, uh, is uh, it, it is going to make it that much harder. 
uh, for this planet to recover. But anyway, that's what I'm thinking about. But it looks like the sunshine is coming out, and I have reached the bottom of my planet-eating cup of coffee. So I'm going to head out. <clears throat> I'm going to head out and seize the day like this uh, self-confident Tyrannosaurus Rex. I'm going to get out there and seize the day while I still can. I highly suggest you get out there and act like a human colossus while you still can. Bye, guys.